let's get going. So um, if you joined our live uh, last week or the week before, I can't actually even remember when it was, um, set these cells up to top balance them, left them overnight and then when I had a look, one of the terminals had stripped uh, the threads right out of it and I think I mentioned in the live last week anyway that you have to be quite careful of these uh, terminals just because they are aluminium or aluminum and they're very soft <laughs> as well um, it's probably one of the biggest downfall with these particular type of uh, lithium ion phosphate prismatic cells that you get out of China is the terminals um, these particular ones are just quite small surface area and with it just being an M6 thread uh, it's not the strongest thing around um, so just something that you have to bear in mind so when that stripped I took it all apart it's this one over here um, and actually drilled it out I tapped a new thread and then put a, a six mil uh, heli coil into there and then put a new grub screw in there and it's pretty tight so we'll see how we go when we actually tighten a nut onto the grub screw to see uh, how tight we can get it and how it feels um, but it, I think it'll work pretty well um, the, it went pretty smoothly I made a, a video of the process of actually drilling it out and, and tapping it obviously with it being aluminium you have to take quite a lot of care uh, but I made a video for that so that's going to be on our YouTube channel and uh, probably on Sunday I'll release that video and you can have a look at that and hopefully it's helpful um, so I'm going to start off by putting my clamp back on here to clamp these cells. The cells pretty much have no charge um, from when I first got them. They're still pretty much sitting at around the 3.3 volts or thereabouts, 3.29 volts. Um, so they're pretty much completely flat. So we're going to charge them up to a full state of charge and then do some capacity testing on them. We've done previous videos of why we clamp them like this. The main reason is that as the cells charge, they expand slightly. So in order to stop uh, all of the components inside the cells from delaminating and, and coming apart, uh, we just put some clamps on them. Just simple, this, this is just a very simple clamp system. Uh, just some th thread bar with um, uh, plywood on either side. Get the, there it is there. And so we're not going to tighten them that tight because the cells will be fairly. Um, they won't. They won't have expanded at all in the state of charge, being at such a low state of charge. So as they charge up, they will expand slightly. I mean, you're not talking about a lot of expansion. You're literally talking about probably a few millimeters, uh, particularly if the cells are in good condition and don't have any problems. Just making sure that they are all lined up. Okay. In this process, a number of ways that you can clamp them. We've done videos about it, but essentially, this is one of our favorite ways of doing it just because it really does clamp them quite well, gives you uh, something easy to carry them with, keeps them nice and tight, stops them from expanding. Um, but we're not clamping them really tight. I want to be able to just sort of shift the plywood if I, if I move it around a little bit. Okay. So I've already inserted these grub screws. I've, I've just uh, tightened them finger tight. I don't want them going too far down into the bottom of the of the barrels uh, with, where the thread is um, because it'll hit the bottom and, and then that's basically where I want it to stop. I don't want it going and uh, going through the bottom into the actual cell. So I've just finger tightened them and because of the way that I'm going to be just putting a nut on it will be obviously pulling the, the grub screws back up so that'll keep it nice and tight. Uh, some people will actually put the cells into parallel and then join them up using bus bars which are 
these copper bars that you get with the cells. I'm not doing that in this case because I've already put the cells in, in series, which is how I'm going to be connecting them up when I actually go to make a 12 volt battery. Um, so the, the main reason why I'm not doing it in parallel is because I don't want to remove the clamp once I've charged the batteries up. So as the batteries charge up, they're going to expand slightly. And so if I was to remove the clamp at that point, then I've wasted time just clamping them in the first place. Because when, when, they, when I remove the clamp, they'll move out and expand. And then that delamination and, and that, that I've spoken about before, uh, that process would happen. Um, so at least doing it this way, clamping them keeps everything together inside the cells, doesn't give any opportunity for delamination of the components. And then I can then use the bus bars to put connect the, the cells up in series, which will then give me a 12 volt battery. Um, so obviously when you're doing this now, uh, this is very, very important that you get the polarity right. So you're just connecting your negative to negative uh, in this setting because we, we just want to connect this in parallel. So it maintains the same voltage and then we're going to top balance that, which is obviously where you charge all of the cells together to achieve the same voltage. Uh, and then at that point, when you connect the BMS, the BMS will then manage all of the cells to make sure, make sure that they maintain that voltage. But it's very important to get the polarity right now and not uh, and, and ensure that we don't have any shorts. And uh, you must always wear glasses. If you don't wear specs like me all the time, um, then you should be wearing safety glasses when you're doing this. So I'm going to connect all these cells up here in parallel so that we can top balance them. <clears throat> so I'll start off with the negative terminals. Get all these off so it's easy. And it's pretty straightforward. Just put a washer on a spring washer and then a nut and I'll just hand tighten it and then I'll go around with a, a spanner shortly. These grub screws are fairly long so I probably won't even get a, a socket all the way down up to the bottom. put the positive cables in place and then I will tighten everything down. Same as before being extra careful not to short anything. <laughs> And there's two main reasons for that. The first is, first and foremost, is obviously it's just safety. Um, if you short the cells, then you can you create sparks, and it can actually arc uh, and create fairly hot uh, pieces of of metal that fly around. And so that obviously you can burn yourself, and if you don't have safety glasses on, you can damage your eyes quite badly doing that. Um, so that's obviously the first point of concern if you were to short something. The second point of concern is just that you damage the actual cells. So if you short them, you can actually cause damage to the cells. So I just tighten them down as far as they'll go just by hand, just finger tight. And then I will get a 10 more spanner onto all of these. Uh -oh. 
these grub screws are quite handy because they just have a little hex head at the top that allows you to hold them in place so that they don't turn with your nut. And as I mentioned, the aluminum terminals are quite delicate, so you have to be quite careful here. And if you don't have insulated tools like I'm working now just with a metal spanner or wrench, um, you want to be very careful not to short the cells. If you can use ter insulated tools, it's better. <laughs> In this instance, I'm not tightening them that tight because I'm not carrying big current between these cables. So when I go to charge it now, I'm only charging probably at about 10 amps. So it's really not high current at all. And uh, so I'm not that worried about the resistance. Uh, when I actually would install this in a van with a like a 200 amp BMS, and a like a two kilowatt inverter or something along those lines in that instance you would be more concerned about the resistance and making sure that you get them as tight as you can for these terminals obviously you can't tighten them that much because they'll strip so this is the terminal that I fixed earlier today the one that had stripped with the heli coil so I'm just going to tighten this up and just see how we go. Feels good. Okay, that's everything. I'm just going to double check. All the cables feel solid. Yep, they all do. And then if I double check the voltage, hold that like that. Hopefully, you can see there. So that should be 3.29, yep. Sweet. Let's get the charge on here. making sure that the terminals for this charger are tightened in and I'm going to make sure that the, they are not touching each other the positive and the negative with this particular charger you need to plug it into the mains first so I'm going to do that now <coughs> it should all turn on there and it's pretty straightforward <coughs> um, essentially this is your your watts, your amps, so this is the current that you're charging at, and then this is your charging voltage. The the watts, you can adjust the the wattage that it charges at, but I just max those out, which then means that it maintains a constant voltage or it, or it works towards that voltage if it hasn't reached it yet, and then it'll adjust the amperage or the current based on how, what state of charge the battery is. So this can be a bit fiddly sometimes, but want to get it onto 3.65 volts like that uh, which is what we want to top balance it to and then we can connect these terminals up so obviously make sure that you get the polarity right that's very important so we connect the negative first onto the negative terminal there and the positive onto the positive terminal there and that would have dropped down there, um, but you can see there it's charging at 10 amps. So this is a 300 amp hour set of battery cells, 
so this will take probably about 30 hours to charge at that current so if we check the voltage quickly normally you'd expect to see the voltage on the cell that you're charging slightly higher than the rest just because that's where the current is coming from the charger so we can figure out how to hold this here So that should read, yeah, 3.3, .3. let me check this one, 3.3, .3. cool, <clears throat> it's looking good, so we'll leave that for the next couple of days, and then uh, once we've got it charged, we'll stick a BMS onto here, and we will do some capacity testing, so I'm going to leave it there, as I mentioned, I'm going to put out the video on Sunday onto our YouTube channel about how I fixed this terminal that was stripped. So if you're interested in seeing that, then hit the subscribe button on YouTube. But otherwise, I'll leave it there and we'll do more of these lives. I'm quite enjoying them. So thanks for watching if you tuned in and we'll see you guys next time. Cheers.